Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a system of differential equations. So we have dy over dx, which is equal to y minus 5z, and dz over dx, which is equal to y plus 7z. y and z are both functions of x, and we're going to be solving for y and z. We're going to find y and z in terms of x. Now, if you are familiar with systems of differential equations, let us know in the comment section if you know of any different ways to solve these kinds of systems. So, let's go ahead and see how we can solve a system like this. First of all, I want to use kind of like a short notation. Instead of dy over dx, I'm going to write it as y prime since y is a function of x. So, we can just talk about the derivatives here, we don't really have partial derivatives, and dz over dx, I can abbreviate it as z prime, and that's equal to y plus 7z. So at this point, you might be thinking, can we just eliminate y from these equations, or z? Yes, but that's not going to be very helpful, because you're still going to have y prime, and z prime, and z in the same equation. So it's not going to be very helpful. Let's do something better than that, and this is how it works in my opinion, but like I said earlier, this is this may not be the only way to do it. So I'm going to go ahead and take one of these equations, doesn't matter which one, I'm going to take the top one, the first one, I'll call this first equation and this one second, and I will differentiate both sides with respect to x one more time. But if you differentiate y prime, you get y double prime, which is the second derivative of y, and on the right hand side you get y prime minus 5z prime. We don't really have any powers like z squared or e to the power z, so differentiating these would be fairly straightforward. Now, why is this a good thing? Okay, now this looks like we got a more complicated equation, but the thing is, we can go ahead and use this information inside the second equation. For example, what can we replace z prime with? Good question, right? From here, we can solve for z prime. Let's do it. Put the 5z prime on the left and bring the y double prime and subtract it from y prime and divide both sides by 5 and you get z prime. Awesome. So z prime can be replaced with that, which is y prime minus, minus y double prime divided by 5. What about y? I'm just going to leave it alone. Plus 7z. What can I replace z with? Good question. And we can do that from the first equation since y prime is y minus 5z from the first equation. We can go ahead and bring the 5z here, and that would become y minus y prime. And then again, we can divide both sides by 5, and that would give us the value of z in terms of y and y prime. So let's go ahead and replace, because this is 7z, replace z with that, y minus y prime divided by 5. And guess what? This equation is in terms of a single variable, and that's y. And you're like, why? <laughs> Don't ask why, because that's what it is. Let's go to multiply everything by 5. That will give us y prime minus y double prime equals. Remember, we're multiplying everything by 5, so that will become 5y from here. And then the 5 uh, in the denominator would cancel out, leaving us with 7 times y minus y prime. And then, of course, we're going to go ahead and distribute the 7. That would give us plus 7y minus 7y prime. Awesome. Now, what do we do with this? It's kind of confusing, right? Not really, because everything is in terms of y. And I think this is a linear equation, right? So, let's go ahead and put everything on the right-hand side. But we can add these two, and we can bring this over here. So, that would become y double prime. And then you would have negative 7 minus 1. So that would be minus 8y prime. And then this is going to be 12y. It's equal 0. Great. Good question, right? Now at this point, you may or may not know what the characteristic equation looks like. So I'm going to show you a more general way to approach these problems. Whenever you have kind of like a polynomial, I should say, even though these are differentials or derivatives, I could consider this a somewhat polynomial. And... The solution to these kinds of equations, well, because the coefficients are also not variables, right? There's no x in the coefficients. We can basically replace y with something like this, e to the power kx, and find the k value. How do you find it? Just differentiate y once, you would get k e to the kx. 
differentiate it one more time. Y double prime is going to be k times k, which is k squared e to the kx. And by introducing this into our equation, you're going to get k squared e to the kx minus 8 times k e to the kx plus 12 times e to the power kx equals 0. And by taking out e to the power kx, you'll get k squared minus 8k plus 12 equals 0. And this part will actually be our characteristic equation, the roots of which will give us the solutions. Make sense? Okay, let me tell you what it looks like. So we can factor this, uh, find two numbers whose product is 12, negative 2 and negative 6. Of course, you want their sum to be negative 8. So now we have k minus 2 times k minus 6 equals 0. Beautiful. From here, we get two solutions, k equals 2 and k equals 6, which means because we assumed our solution is going to be in this form, y equals e to the kx, y equals e to the power 2x, and y equals e to the power 6x, our solutions. And guess what? You can test it out by substituting each of these separately. But guess what? If we have two independent solutions, their linear combination will also be a solution, that which is easy to prove. In other words, if that's the case, we can safely say that, okay, c1 times e to the 2x plus c2 times e to the 6x will also be a solution. And this will be a more general solution because c1 and c2 are arbitrary constants. Does that make sense? They are real constants. Can they be complex? That's a good question. Now, notice that if c1 is 1 and c2 is 0, you get e to the 2x, which is like a specific case, which we already talked about. So this is kind of like a general solution to y, but now I got to find z. But that wouldn't be too hard because if you think about it, there's a relationship, right? Like, for example, if you look at the first equation, we have y prime and y. Let's go ahead and rewrite the first equation. We have y prime is y minus 5z. And now let's go ahead and find y prime from here. y prime would be 2 from the derivative of 2x, 2c1 e to the 2x, and this would be 6c2 e to the 6x. That's y prime. And then y prime is going to be 2c1 e to the 2x plus 6c2 e to the 6x. And now we're going to go ahead and just set it equal to y minus 5c, and the y is c1 e to the 2x plus c2 e to the 6x minus 5z. My goal is to solve for z, so I'm going to go ahead and put this on the right, left-hand side so it can become positive and bring these over to the right-hand side. But that's going to give us negative c1 e to the 2x minus 5c2 e to the 6x. And then divide everything by 5, you're going to get z equals negative c1 over 5 e to the 2x minus c2 e to the 6x. Let me go ahead and bring the y down so that we can kind of look at those two together e to the 2x and e to the 6x together. So that will be the solution to our, oops, that will basically be the solution to our system. Now, is there another way to solve it? Let us know what you think, okay? Because this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.